the path to be built into a holy temple. Blessed are those who have ears to hear. Reverend Dr. Holly Namok Lee, United Methodist Church. Translator, Mrs. Irene Park. Reader, Mr. Jacob Lee. This video is made by Reverend Dr. Holly Namok Lee, who is a minister of the United Methodist Church. She got a degree of doctor in ministry at Claremont Theological Seminary in California. She is an executive director of Menowa Ministry. She carries a healing ministry. She is an author of 40 books and led 1,000 revival services and over 200 seminars for ministers. Now she lives in California with her husband, Reverend Peter Yongtek Lee. She is the fourth daughter of Dr. Sung Bun Yun, former president of Methodist Theological University in Seoul, Korea. Even though we confess our faith with mouth, it is difficult to believe from the heart. Last time, you have explained about faith and grace very simply. This time, I would like to know about faith more deeply. The expressions we use most from the Bible are, I love you, thank you, and I believe. We tend to say these words too excessively without sincerity. We seem to spit out these words without really understanding the true meaning of them. Even though everybody continuously proclaims, I believe in prayer, I am not sure if people really mean it. Please explain the difference between our faith in you and what people say in this world. The difference between the biblical faith and faith in the world is this. In this world, you believe what you see, but saints believe by hearing. You often say, I believe, but you mostly say that out of habit. Most of all, the faith I address has several differences from the world. Firstly, the biblical faith is created by hearing, not by seeing. People in this world first see and then believe but the faithful believe without having to see, and their faith comes from hearing. That is why I keep saying, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Mark 4, verse 9. So, then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, verse 17. You hear so many things these days, but this hearing is hearing the word from heaven, hearing my message. The worldly message do not generate faith no matter how much you hear it. The reason for not generating the faith is because one does not want to hear. People need to hear the word from heaven, but it is hidden from some individuals. Son of man, you dwell in the midst of a rebellious house, which has eyes to see but does not see, and ears to hear but does not hear. For they are a rebellious house. Ezekiel 12, verse 2. It is not that I prevent them from hearing. Not only they intentionally not hear, but they have no interest to begin with. If I made them not hear, why would I have sent the prophets to proclaim? Sometimes I spoke in parables so that they may not realize their sins. Mark 4, verse 11. But their stubborn hearts refused to hear about heaven no matter how I tried to convey. They do not listen and keep wanting to see something. Hence, no generation of faith. The world is a one-way road of faith, but for believers, the concept of faith is both ways. In other words, faith is generated from dynamic trust and active relationship between the parties. This faith is totally different from one's conviction. It is not a conviction, but a personal relationship. It is believing in someone and developing a relationship of trust. If you have faith in me, then personal trust is formed. This is not like the one-way conviction towards certain information, scientific knowledge, or logic. It is the relationship of trust which is alive and dynamic. The reason I describe it as being dynamic is because the nature of this meeting is person to person. 
as a result, it creates transformation and they react to each other. Different from the one-way convictions of this world, this is something which is generated from mutual personal relationship. The worldly convictions are irrelevant to life and death. Wrong conviction does not really affect the person's life. It cannot affect life. But the person's life and death depends on faith. It is not like you can either believe or not believe, because unbelief leads to eternal death. This is the reason we call it the confession of faith for the issue of life and death. It is the same as confessing that you entrust your life to me. Entrusting your own life is the most grand trust, isn't it? Since it means you entrust all the keys of life to me, everything is in my hands whether you live or die. This is a total trust with your life at stake. And it is different from having convictions in the worldly knowledge. Your life and death depends on it. Therefore, feed on the gospel diligently. In the gospel, there is a record about me who is enough to entrust your whole life. It is compiled with my disciples' confessions of faith. They all gave their lives and became martyrs. They knew the life did not end here, and it was the confessions of those who entrusted the issue of life and death to me. When such confessions becomes your own, you will have faith. When you trust that I am fully God and fully human, your whole life enters into me. I am neither your guardian angel nor a rabbi who goes around to heal diseases. I am fully God, fully human. Therefore, I am the Son of God who has completed salvation. Who do you think that I am? I believe you are the Son of the living God. Your word is the truth. And since the word is the bread of life, I wither quickly if I do not feed on it. The most important fact to me is that you are the God of the living throughout eternity, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Is that so? It is like the confession of Peter. It is the Holy Spirit who lets you in this understanding. He cultivated your heart as good soil and planted the seeds so that such confession is made possible. Therefore, faith is a personal trust toward living God. You already knew who he is and what kind of God he is, and that truth was planted in your heart and appeared as the fruit. The holy place begins to be built on that confession of faith and it becomes the foundation. In order for the house to be built solidly, the foundation ought to be solid. The confession in the gospel becomes the foundation of your holy place. The secure foundation guarantees the construction process of the building. Without the foundation, pillars cannot be built, can they? Depending on its foundation, the house of life will vary. You build a house of life with the word, with me. In other words, I ought to be its foundation. When the house is built on my word, it will withstand floods and storms. The reason why someone gives up the life of faith or deteriorates in the middle, it is because deteriorated base materials were used in constructing the foundation. For instance, if you thought I would make you rich, staying in poverty will cause you to give up faith eventually and the house under construction will collapse. Only the house built with gold and silver is strong. In order for your holy place to be secure, you need to come in through the door of faith, and that door is me. The confession of the gospel becomes the foundation of your divine house. Architects know that the land which is square and level is the most safe to build a house don't they? The four corners of the foundation are the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew wrote about the King's sermon. Mark wrote about the ministry of the servant who came to die. 
Luke wrote about me, who came as a human being, and John wrote about my divinity as God. When these four cornerstones of the foundation are solid, the house will not shake. That is why you must hear the gospel continuously. The gospel records all the details about me most extensively. In the gospel, you can see all the prophecies about me come into realization. Blessed are those who receive open ears by hearing the gospel. You do not need to go far. When you receive the gospel in your heart, you will meet me. Why is it so difficult to believe? It took my whole life for the head knowledge to come down to the heart and bear fruit in life. It took so long that I do not understand why it is so difficult to gain faith. I wish it would be easier. The worldly conviction is through your head, and you must trust me with all your character, your life, and your heart. Faith is not acquired by own effort. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is invited in your life, the belief that He is God is planted. It is an event which you naturally believe, not try to believe. You must receive the assistance from above, otherwise it will only become the head knowledge. Relying on one's own effort to believe is difficult, but if you render it to the Holy Spirit who helps you, Believing can be instantaneous and simple. Lord, thank you for today's teaching also. I have realized that the gem, which is called faith, is the first and utmost checkpoint to enter into you. And that is the foundation for me to be built into a holy temple. Since you said faith is a gift, Please pour the anointing of faith so that I may go deeper into more intimate relationships with you. And by hearing your word more, may my faith become more abundant and alive. Help us to discard superficial faith and grow into active relationship with you to the maturity of Christ, so that we may be built into a holy place every day, the divine house where you can reside in us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can order these three books from Amazon Kindle. 365 Prayers of Blessing for Your Children. Theory and Praxis of Land Work. The Lord's Visitation for 14 Days. My Beloved Bride, Heal as I Reveal. The Heavenly Newsroom English video will now be uploaded on another channel too. The channel's name is News from Heaven and is linked to a Yunnamok TV banner. Search Holly Namok Lee on YouTube and you'll find it. Thank you. In Hebrew, Menua is an adjective that describes being restful. We use the term Menua as a noun. Please hit the subscribe button for Yunnamok TV, News from Heaven, thank you for watching this video.